Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazarov's chess channel and welcome to our Garry Kasparov saga. So in this series we're following Garry Kasparov's life and his career from the year 1981 till 2000. So today we're continuing with our USSR chess championship in 1981. Uh, as I said in my previous video, Garry Kasparov won this tournament, had the opportunity to uh, continue then in then qualify into the so-called uh, interzonal tournament then after that he won one of these interzonal tournaments and finally get his place into the candidate so today we're analyzing the game uh, from Gary's perspective uh, with the black pieces and uh, he played the game against um, uh, Adrian Mikalchishin Adrian Mikhail Chishin also a very strong grandmaster from the Ukraine and uh, among many things uh, he managed to win one one time the youth uh, USSR chess championship which was also a very very tough uh, tough tournament and uh, as i said in this tournament in the uh, 1981 USSR Championship, so many great players uh, have participated. So it was really a great accomplishment that uh, Gary Kasparov won, the, won this tournament eventually. So let's check out the game. As I said, uh, Gary played here with the black pieces. It was a very interesting choice of an opening because uh, Gary Kasparov most of the times played uh, the King's Indian, but here he'll try a very nice Benoni. And uh, if you have troubles, maybe to play against D4, you can also check out this line. It's uh, very good, I think, uh, and it's very aggressive. So uh, let's check out the game. Here, uh, D4 played by Mikhail Chishin. We have Knight to F6, C4, and C5, the Benoni. After Knight to F3, this is the so called Antony Benoni setup, uh, with which uh, White is trying to delay the situation in the center. Uh, Kasparov simply takes c takes d4 and after knight to d4 if you try something like knight to c6 which would be the most natural way here to proceed white can always transpose with knight to c3 maybe we can try g6 white can always go into the so-called maroxy bind setup which most of the times you don't like to play against it's a very positional line white has always a slightly advantage in the continuation of the game here Gar Gary Kasparov of course a great attacker and a great uh, uh, tactician tries of course the most aggressive way he plays the move e5 after knight to b5 there is one problem uh, if you try something like d6 then you always have this uh, problem of the backward pawn so you need to play the move d5 but the problem is now after c takes d5 that you cannot take with the knight that's the main problem of this particular opening because queen takes d5 will happen after queen takes d5 you get the fork knight to c7 and it's game over here for black so this line that uh, Gary Kasparov is playing is basically a gambit line uh, so bishop to c5 the problem is uh, for white that uh, after knight to c3 which is still common theory and castling you cannot play the move e4 that's the main problem you would love to connect these two pawns to get this uh, pawn supported this would be a supported pass pawn and uh, from an end game's perspective this would be a winning game for white of course but uh, the problem is now after the potential e4 you get knight to g4 and there's no good way to protect this pawn on f2 so that's why white has to play the move e3 or has to play something like g3 that's uh, that are i think uh, the main lines of this particular opening so after casting e3 played by Mikhail Chishin and now e4 so the idea of this gambit line is to get this e4 goal uh, because now this pawn is of course on the other side of the board we have occupied our opponent's side of the board this pawn can be supported with rook to e8 and it's really hard now for white to develop the pieces uh, because this knight uh, on c3 has taken the natural square of this knight so this knight has to jump to d2 and you see you have some developing troubles as I said, it's still slightly better for white because you're playing as white. White hasn't made mis uh, mistakes so far. So this is still common theory, as I said. But here, if you flip the board, I always uh, was annoyed by this particular lines when I have to face this uh, these types of pawn structures when your, my opponent has advanced the pawn. This bishop has still a, a good activity to maybe participate in the attack. And the problem is for white that basically you have to uh um castle into black's attack so that's really a great opening you can also check it out after the move e4 Mikhail Chishin tried bishop to e2 and Kasparov simply removed the queen from the first rank from the eighth rank and uh here uh he's trying now finally to attack this pawn on d5 in the game knight to d2 we have rook to d8 and now a3 was played by Mikhail Chishin was was uh his 
first inaccuracy sort of in the game because here white uh, needs to go simply with castling after a potential knight takes d5 here white has all, also the opportunity to play uh, something like knight takes e4 and can also grab a pawn still black has a very nice activity on the default but uh, as i said still this extra pawn now the piece the, uh, the main strategical advantage to the pawn on e4 is lost so that's why i think white has a comfortable game here so a3 as i said uh an inaccuracy gary kasparov simply takes and here uh, knight takes d5 was played if you try now this idea knight takes e4 it's a risky choice because you can uh, you face some tactics we have bishop takes e3 f takes e3 knight takes e3 the queen has to move and now knight takes g2 is also the possibility after king to f2 knight to f4 this is really an endangered king position uh, this bishop is also very active we can uh, pardon me uh, we can also include this uh, at knight into the attack knight to c6 knight to uh, d4 although down a piece i wouldn't love to be white here with this endangered king situation so as i said so far this idea uh, to take the pawn e4 is not a possibility here Mikhail chishin tried knight takes d5 and after rook takes d5 you see uh gary kasparov has built a very powerful attack this bishop has a good activity this bishop has a good activity here uh the knight can develop on the smallest natural square on c6 what black has a uh, uh, has as a problem is still this advanced pawn on e4 it is our main strength but it's also our main weakness because this pawn can be attacked further with some other pieces in the game that's why queen to c2 uh, played by Mikhail chisin and now bishop to f5 uh, gary kasparov has to protect the pawn and now b4 so it's, it's it is of course the tempo on the bishop bishop to b6 and now bishop to b2 here Mikhail chisin found a good way how to get out of this developing mess he has now also good activity with his pieces in the game kasparov tried knight to c6 and now castling here comes a very interesting idea queen to g5 if you take uh here knight takes e4 uh that was a tricky idea here by kasparov then you get to move queen to g6 there are now several choices how to protect this um uh knight bishop to d3 is of course not a possibility because we simply take rook takes d3 followed with uh queen uh bishop takes e4 the uh, queen has to move and you're going to be checkmated here on g2 so if you try for instance bishop to e f3 here then uh knight to e5 uh, is very very dangerous uh, again we have attacked the bishop if you try bishop takes e5 then rook takes e5 and you see now we have attacked the knight three times and again it's game over f3 is not a possibility here too because uh, after f3 bishop takes e3 will happen and again it's a bad position for for white so the only way to escape from this idea is to play king to h1 like uh, Mikhail chishin played but now kasparov plays a very very interesting idea rook to d6 he leaves again this e4 pawn hanging now uh the tactic that i've explained with this pinning idea doesn't work anymore but still very very interesting because here Mikhail Chishin simply takes knight takes e4 after bishop takes e4 queen takes e4 and Gary Kasparov's idea was to deflect the queen from the second rank now this rook can come on d2 and now both of these bishops are attacked but Mikhail Chishin missed here something he had now the opportunity to play simply bishop take uh, bishop to uh, a6 if you try rook takes uh, b, uh, b2 then bishop uh, takes b2 is the possibility and you see uh, white will get back his piece uh, so the rook is hanging uh, the knight is hanging so it's a better position here for for white but uh, if um, if uh, for instance here uh, um, uh, bishop takes uh, b takes a6 happens uh here from black's perspective then of course Mikhail chishin would have the opportunity to play queen takes c6 and now you see the rook is hanging so it's again a better position for white so this idea of gary kasparov uh to give up this pawn on e4 uh, e4 was a mistake so it he didn't calculate this tactics but Mikhail chishin didn't see uh, the best continuations he played uh, the move b5 uh attacking the knight but now Gary simply takes rook takes e2 we have uh, b takes uh, c6 and after rook takes b2 Mikhail Chishin has now after c takes b7 a very powerful pawn but I believe that Gary cal calculated everything 
uh, he only missed this uh, tactic before but now Gary Kasparov simply gets back rook to f8 we have rook to c1 and now uh, bishop to uh, a5 developing the bishop we have rook to c8 you see this pawn is very very annoying and in the game Kasparov played rook to uh, queen to b5 now comes really a very interesting idea by Mikhail Chishin, which is of course rook to c1 we want to support our uh, our uh, rook on c8 in the game Kasparov tried this idea uh, queen takes b7 but now a very very cool move queen to e8 and it seems now that something went wrong for Gary Kasparov that he missed some tactics but of course Gary Kasparov a great tactician a great attacker mounts really a great counter attack he plays a queen sacrifice queen takes c8 and believe me or not this is a better position for black Mikhail Chishin had his opportunities you saw uh, with this move bishop to a6 but after that it's it's a one-way ticket here after queen takes c8 queen takes c8 was played and now bishop to d2 the problem is now uh, what to do if you take the rook of course uh, no checkmate threats are possible here uh, on the eighth rank because then the king can escape to e7 if you try something like queen to c6 in order to escape with the queen and um, uh, uh, grab the bishop after potential bishop to c1 then you get bishop to c1 but the problem is now after queen to c1 you get rook to b8 there is this double threat there is of course this checkmate threat on the eighth rank if you try to create for yourself some breeding space with g uh, g2 maybe eight, uh, g3 or h3 then uh, rook to b1 will happen and you lose the queen so that's why after the move bishop to d2 Mikhail Chishin had to create some breeding spaces for for the king he played the move h3 h6 also by Kasparov and now you see Mikhail Chishin escapes with the queen queen to c4 but now bishop to c1 after queen to c1 now rook takes f2 very important pawn that uh, Gary Kasparov has grabbed because if we take out take off now these two rooks and the queen I believe that black has a better endgame because uh, white has too many pawn islands you see white has four uh, uh three pawn islands this isolated pawn in the potential endgame without the rooks and the queen on the board could cause some troubles uh for white so as i said the idea now of garik as part of the endgame idea is now to double up rooks maybe rook to b8 then rook to b2 and simply trade off more pieces uh if white for instance the defends this pawn then simply give up two rooks uh, for a queen and a pawn and then go into an endgame with an extra pawn which would be of course a winning position here for black but because Shishin tried queen to c7 to try uh, to grab another pawn we have uh, a6 by Kasparov uh, queen to a7 and now of course rook to f6 we want to keep everything protected now we could also create rook to e6 rook to e8 some batteries on the e file simply trying to grab this pawn in the game Mikhail Chishin tried a4 we have rook to d8 uh, a5 and now very important move rook to d1 uh, rook to h2 and now rook to d2 uh, here Mikhail Chishin tried uh, rook to b8 uh, getting the queen actively into the game but now after king to h7 we have uh, queen to b4 rook to f2 queen to e4 and now after f5 in this position white resigned as i said the main idea is now simply to take if the queen stays on this diagonal we'll simply take the pawn and this is a winning endgame here for black we can also try something after that something like rook to e2 and also create some checkmate threats with these rooks which are of course covering the second and the first rank so great great attack again by Gary Kasparov you saw there were inaccuracies of course there were mistakes but uh, Mikhail Chishin uh, didn't use um, didn't get something out of uh, Gary Kasparov's inaccuracy got punished and uh, Gary won the game and uh, this was again a great endgame technique by the beast from Baku so okay I hope that you uh, enjoyed this video we'll follow now some more games from the USSR uh, chess championship from 1980, 1981 if you want to see more games from this tournament here's the link of my Gary Kasparov saga and if you want to see the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history check out my best chess games of all time series and you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content. See you soon with some more videos and uh, chess is the best of course.